Okay, so um, the service we launched in uh, 2006 now, um, it's called 3G Doctor. Um, and it's a service that allows you to video call a registered doctor. It provides you the documented advice of a registered doctor. Um, that's a little bit different than people might be familiar with, with Skype and things like that, because most patients don't get a piece of paper that says what happened during the, the encounter, the information that was shared. That's not a de facto standard of healthcare, and we're hoping that um, through, through the use of mobile technologies and the pervasiveness of them now amongst patients, um, we've got an, an opportunity to address that on a global scale. The difference is, um, quite simply, um, it's a website like this. You go on there, to, um, you click to consult with a doctor, you register your credit. Um, very simple process where you're using your mobile phone number as your identifi identifier. You're using any of a wide range of digital um, payment mechanisms, PayPal, um, Visa, MasterCard, all the usual ones. Um, it's only available in the UK and Ireland, I should say, and that's because of the regulatory um, requirements of a doctor to practice medicine, to provide advice to patients. Um, we have an opportunity for you to share a PHR, so with a project we did with uh, Microsoft Health Vault, you can actually authorise the doctor to see your Health Vault record. Why don't you remind them what a PHR is? So it's a personal healthcare record. It might be something that you've created yourself. Um, we also have a little tool that lets you sort of put in that very basic information. But the real heart of the service is that the patients then go onto a service, it's an interactive medical history taking questionnaire. Um, this was developed over a 20 year period in the US. It's been clinically validated at the Mayo Clinic. There's a published paper, Mayo Clinic Proceedings. And essentially what this does is it immortalizes the best history taking skills of the world's best doctors. So the problem is loads of people are retiring, leaving medicine, um, and the skills they have for history taking are being lost. They're not being replicated. So if we look at other industries, how they streamline services and use best practice, this really is, um, is doing that. It also turns the table. So I always thought when I first saw doctors using EHRs, I always thought the screen's facing the wrong person here. Um, the screen would be facing the doctor. And I thought, well, the person who we're trying to give information to here is the patient, the other side of that table. What's happening here is the patient is being given the time, the opportunity, the access, because it's 24 seven, to be able to give their history in a time and a place that suits them best. There's no rush, there's no demand on you to be quick given an answer. You simply go through this, they're not difficult. Some of them you can say don't know, and that also uh, enlightens um, the doctor to certain things that might be particularly sensitive to you. Um, but it's interactive, so you might start with a drop down questionnaire, you might start with one of our top 20 most popular um, questionnaires, but you can go into something else. So if you answer something about cardiac history in your family, you'll then be asked to have you um, relatives who've had a heart attack and things like that. Um, similarly, on depression, if you um, signal to the, the depression that you, did you, yes, you, you feel depressed quite regularly, um, you can then go in, you will automatically then go into things like the Zung depression scalings, these are things that normally you'd see a GP then be referred to a psychologist and then do this test. But you're doing this in the comfort of your home at a time and a place that suits you. And then what happens at the end of that process is there's a three text box and that's where you can share any additional information that you feel is important that you'd like to share with the registered doctor who's gonna be calling you. There is the opportunity to share photos, a website address, a YouTube video, a patient community stream, you know, a thread that you've been reading. You might have been reading that to look at second opinions. Um, but the key bit here is, I think so much we're missing the opportunity in healthcare because we're not using all these online tools. Has anybody in the room shared a YouTube video with a doctor before? Hands up. Given a, given a YouTube video to a doctor for him to watch so he can give you advice. About medicine, yeah. Oh, anything, actually. Most, most doctors could benefit from some social things. But, yeah, so we've got two, three, two people in the whole room that have ever, three people. And what about the doctor giving you YouTube videos? Excellent. We've got um, different people, but we're back on three. Um, but I think that's very interesting because there's millions of hours of really good content made by some of the world's best specialists, but we're very hard to go into a practice, tell a doctor to look at that while we're face to face. But the opportunity for a remote doctor to support you with this informational challenge that you may have, 
um, I think it's very important and it, evidence of our service is that it's proven very important for the patients to be able to do this. So what's then happening is the information that's being collected is provided to the doctor for him to review, her to review and share that, you know, conduct whatever research they need to do. Read that website, find out the source of that content, that research paper that you want to discuss. And that's done before they call you. So this isn't a revolving door. You might be familiar when you go to a normal doctor. You come in, unload whatever you can remember, and then hopefully um, you've remembered everything, and then somehow the doctor's going to take all this information on board, even though it's at the end of the day and he's seen 35 patients already. This is a very different way of, um, of, of managing that. But the video consult itself normally lasts about 10 minutes. And it ends because what we're giving you is a, a documentation of what happened. And that supports continuity of care and, and you go in somewhere else with, with the advice that you've been given. That advice can often be a referral to, to get something over the counter in a pharmacy. Um, similarly, it might be to go and talk to your doctor. And the great thing about things like embarrassing problems and things that we maybe don't want our family doctor, you know, or, or we don't feel like sharing with people, the great thing about that is we don't actually have to say it all again. So if you've ever called a call center before, you'll know that you might go to the doctor and they'll say, oh, please don't tell me what was said on the telephone call, because it would be much quicker. You're just telling me why you're here today talking to me. Um, and so what's happening here is the doctor can, you can provide a piece of paper, they can read it, um, and you, know, you can get on with finding out how, how you're gonna fix this problem. But it's trying to make your, your next step the most appropriate one. Now, after every consultation, we ask the patients to help us with the feedback that they have on the experience they had. So do they think we're rubbish? Do they think you know, we're good? How do you think they could improve? Um, some of the ideas, the best, actually the best ideas we've ever had, have come directly from that. So things like, uh, why don't you share YouTube videos with us? So now, automatically, within every consult, at least one or two YouTube videos is going to the patient. Um, so based on that continual feedback loop, we found um, development of the project uh, and the service has, 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 has gone on leaps and bounds. But that action plan is the key thing. It's the next move you make is the right one. Um, and that's really the value proposition. What we're trying to do is make sure that when the patients log in and download this, what they're getting is an independent, impartial doctor's perspective on their information. That's key. If you've got a family member who's a doctor, an uncle or an auntie, this is the type of experience you might get with them. They know about your history. They've got only your best interest at heart. They've got no other way of making money from you. We don't sell anything else to these patients. We just sell the documented device of registered doctors. Um, so no prescriptions there. I thought this bit got to the, take, taken out, so I actually skipped through that. Um, but yeah, mobile health best practices. One of the things I think, a lot of people think, you know, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna drop the M in the M health. It's just gonna be healthcare, because everyone's got mobile. But actually, I think the real dynamic's gonna be is that we're gonna, it's just gonna look like a mobile experience. And everywhere where anything, entertainment, you know, music has converged to mobile, it just looks like mobile. So you say, what's someone doing? I'm, I'm doing mobile, I'm on my mobile. But actually, they might be doing what we might have done before, where we go to a record shop, choose a record, and they're doing all that on Spotify. And so I hope that one day, healthcare will be seen and regarded as, a, as a, just a mobile experience, something we do with our phone. And I think it's then when we have access and we have something that's always with us and can always encourage us and we can always reach out via it, um, that we're gonna have this new type of experience, that healthcare is such an engaging service that we want to engage with it. So instead of today's situation where no one really wants to do healthcare, um, we've re completely re repositioned the value proposition. And I think a lot of the people who are involved in this conference are really making some of the big steps to make that happen. I, I think there's one important thing before you close, which is to talk about the business model. So the business model is that we charge per patient, per consult. So it's a 35 pound charge, um, and that covers you for the use of the instant medical history questionnaire, the research that the doctor does, the video consult, and the written report. And are any of the patients getting reimbursed through insurance? Some patients can. So for example, in uh, a country like Ireland, again, we're UK and Ireland only, there are lots of people who have a health insurance plan, um, namely employees of big companies like Apple and Google, and they can simply use the receipt that we provide them and put it straight to their insurer. So essentially, we've got around the, the problems that 
a lot of people would say reimbursement in the US, that you won't get reimbursed for telecare. In Ireland, it's actually cheaper for a health insurer to pay for a consult with us than it would be normally with you know, going to a bricks and mortar clinic. So if it's something minor or they want a second so, opinion. So you figured out a price by including the fees that the doctor would charge you and then I guess your overhead? Yeah, so we're a business run by doctors. So we, we factor it into just normal business. This, this is our business. Um, it's not like we outsource it or anything like that. We're a healthcare provider. Some people think we're a technology company, but actually that's just sort of a byproduct of what we're doing. Um, but the key thing is, you know, We've got it to a price point. People say subscriptions, and can you think of all these imaginative ways to screw patients out of money? And we just think, you know, they really don't understand what we're doing there. And one of the things we're saying is, look, this is the return taxi money. You know, no way, no time. You can do it any time you want, but it's the same sort of pricing point as you get a taxi to a clinic and get a taxi back. So, do you really need it to be in reimbursed? Isn't this something that's attractive enough? for us just to want to do it and pay it out of our own pocket. Well, I can make everybody laugh, but in, in France, it's easier to get somebody to pay for a plumber than for going to the physician. Much they want to be expensive. reimbursed. And they're no good on video calls, by the way. <laughs> okay, well, thank you. Thanks, Denise.